Hello again. Hi, everybody. And hello again, John, Dad, Dad, John, and thank you for joining us. Um, quick intro, super quick intro today because Dad's on the clock. He's got a, a patient, a client coming in. Today, guys, is all about osteoporosis and bone health. So welcome back, Melbourne's favorite naturopath, John. Thank you. And may I just jump straight in, please? Okay, uh, you're so- You're jumping in or am I jumping in? I'll jump in, I'll jump in with jump the first in. question. Okay, thanks, Dad. So, okay, osteoporosis and bone health. All right, apparently there's something like 3 million people in Australia with osteoporosis and apparently primarily women. Uh, I've been told um, 10 times more women than men with osteoporosis, which is quite scary. My first question to you is, what do we do? How do we prevent and treat it? That's a very, very good question because again, as uh, we were speaking yesterday about other things, Osteoporosis is a preventable disease. And if we can figure out the um, five or six things that accelerate bone loss, uh, then we can do a lot to, um, to stop osteoporosis. Unfortunately, the, treat the, the accepted medical treatment for osteoporosis is um, uh, some preparations called biphosphonates. They used to be, imagine this, they used to be given once a day. Then they figured out that the side effects were too much to suffer. And so they made them once a week. And then they figured that that was too much. And then the tablet became once a month. And now they've got injections that they do every six months. So uh, the, ideally we have to prevent it. And there are several um, natural ways of, of helping osteoporosis. Weight bearing exercise being one of the very, very important things. You get some weights you do squats and sit-ups and you build up your muscles and by pressing the strain on your bones you increase the strength of the bones yeah but nevertheless one of the things that we must not do when we have osteoporosis is rely solely on calcium so many times i have patients here who've been told you have osteoporosis, you've got to take calcium, and unfortunately, it's the worst kind of calcium. Some preparations out there in the market which are calcium carbonate, very, very difficult. And perhaps many of them are not told about some of the simple things that they can do. For example, when the body is acid, the body uses calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate from the bones to reduce the acidity. Well, you might well ask, how do we reduce acidity in the body? Well, it's funny we should say that because we covered it yesterday. Acidity, the, the main source of acidity in the body is the acid that comes out of the stomach. And then once it goes into the intestines, it has to be quickly neutralized. And the neutralization of the acid in the intestines happens by the lactic acid producing bacteria in the intestines. And so we have to have lots and lots and lots of good acid, lactic acid producing bacteria. And these are the lactobacillus, acidophilus and bifidobacteria. So that's how you reduce acidity. Of course, uh, too much protein uh, makes you acid. So that's where, you know, we say that milk and meat is acid and vegetables are alkaline. This is where this comes from. But there are other things. And unfortunately, again, my God, this is twice in a row. People will switch off and never see me again. Uh, alcohol is not very good for osteoporosis. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I'm so sorry, guys. I really am so sorry, but cheer up. Heineken has got a zero alcohol beer, which is very acceptable. And of course, nowadays you've got the, the, the low alcohol wines and low alcohol beers, but anyhow, so, Drinking more than an uh, occasional drink of alcohol increases bone loss, yeah? Some medications increase bone loss. And strangely, these are the antacid medications. We talked about acidity in the body causing bone loss, and yet uh, these uh, proton pump inhibitors and um, other antacid preparations that we take for the stomach, like uh, Losec and Zantac and uh, Nexium and all, all of these things, because people usually are long term, years upon years upon years upon years on these, uh, and they uh, they cause um, 
bone loss. Another interesting cause of bone loss is stress. And so it's kind of a perfect storm when ladies go through the menopause, their estrogen goes down because of the menopausal strain, uh, um, mesopol, me, <laughs> menopausal changes, sometimes stress is part of the whole thing as they try to adjust to. So then they have both a low estrogen and uh, high stress at the same time. Now, stress causes bone loss because of the production of cortisol in the body. And cortisol is a, um, a, a thing that causes bone loss. Well, how do you deal with stress? Hmm. There are two, <laughs> two ways of dealing with stress, as this often is. One is pharmaceutical or natural stress relief preparations. And the natural stress relief preparations are extremely effective. Uh, but again, we have the pharmaceutical ones, you know, the old Valium and, and so on that reduce stress. Far more better it is to reduce stress by changing your point of view. Oh, this is my beautiful, my beautiful niece, Sophie. Sophie, say hi. 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 <laughs> Sophie, say bye. 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 Thanks for love. <laughs> Um, where were we? Yes. Um, stress, stress. How do we reduce stress? Yes. So meditation, mindfulness, yoga, and as I said earlier, changing your point of view about the things that stress you. Sometimes simply by changing your point of view, the stress can disappear, even though the circumstances are still there. And it, it does sound very easy, doesn't it? When you say it, it sounds easy. It's extremely difficult and I'm not um, ridiculing it and making it uh, insignificant. It, it's a very serious, serious thing. But nevertheless, cortisol produced because of stress will cause bone loss. Well, vitamin D, my goodness, I don't know what's happening with vitamin D in the world today, but we seem to be deficient with vitamin D. And Philip Day and many other natural holistic doctors know that you have to have a vitamin D just above 100 um, in, in your blood tests and so on. Yeah. So vitamin D is very, very, it's also very important for COVID as is uh, zinc and some other things to boost your immune system. Maybe we'll do an immune system uh, session one day. But vitamin D is essential for the proper utilization of calcium and the proper um, strengthening of the bones. Vitamin K2, um, it's interesting that it's called K2 because there are two K2s. There's K2 that you get from the green leafy vegetables like spinach and so on. And there's also a K2 that you get from things called offal. Offal are liver and kidneys and heart and lung. And in some cultures, these become delicacies, but in some cultures, you kind of look at them and say, yuck, I'm not touching this stuff. Isn't there a tablet? Yes, there is. We can make <laughs> vitamin D together with K2 in a capsule form, and we do a lot of it here. One of the most important uh, parameters that increase bone loss is hormonal loss as we age. As you know, as we age, we lose muscle, our testosterone goes down, our progesterone goes down, and our estrogen goes down. You would think that the primary pharmaceutical um, weapon against osteoporosis would be these natural things, natural testosterone, natural progesterone, and natural estrogen which we do here at the Compounding Pharmacy every day. And most holistic doctors use this weapon to help reverse osteoporosis and they reverse it quite capably. And finally, there is something else about bone that people don't think. You know, you think bone, you think calcium, you think bone, you think calcium. Well, bone is 30% collagen. Where have we heard that before? Collagen, huh. collagen 
is what makes bone together with protein and it forms again the the, the, the structure the um, um, how shall I put it like a, a, a net if you like and then calcium and strontium and god knows what else goes into that and it makes the bone but collagen is what makes the bone strong and elastic all at the same time and the trouble with some of the pharmaceutical injections and tablets is your your bones become harder but at the same time they become more brittle so instead of being soft and breaking they become brittle and can break uh, mind you i'm not a doctor and i'm not giving you medical advice listen to what your doctor says because doctors are god's gift to mankind as we all know so back to collagen for a moment did you know that collagen stop laughing you're going to make me laugh sorry, collagen, sorry. look at this collagen peptides improve bone density let's have a look this is from the National Institute of Health, the National Center for Biotechnology Information, uh, PubMed. So this is not some charlatan saying that take collagen because I make money when you buy collagen. This is the National Institute of Health that says that collagen peptides improve bone mineral density postmenopausal women. And it says conclusions. These data uh, demonstrate that the intake of collagen peptides increase BMD, that's bone mass density, in postmenopausal women. In addition, there was favorable shift in bone markers indicating increased bone formation and reduced bone degradation. They basically say the same thing three times in three different ways, but the basic thing of this whole thing is collagen reverses osteoporosis. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. How about that? How about that? I mean, collagen does so many things, so many things. So in a nutshell, we are looking at balancing our hormones and we do provide hormonal tests that people can do and they, we give a report and they can take the report to their doctors and take it from there. Um, you, you take collagen, you do weight bearing exercises, you try to reduce your stress levels, you make sure that your vitamin D is up high you make sure uh, that you eat well, that you have a lot of raw vegetables, like we said yesterday, and not too much meat and bread, which are acidic forming. Uh, you make sure that you've got proper gut bugs in your, in, in your intestines so that the acid from the stomach will be neutralized. And in general, again, we can speak about this for hours and hours and hours, but in general, this is what we have, and we can offer solutions for each of these points that I have mentioned. Thank you for listening. That's awesome. That was good. And Dad, you uh, anticipated all of my questions as you were talking. Uh, particularly, I, I wanted to ask you about that point that you made um, about acidity. Uh, when the body is acidic, it takes, as you said, something takes the nutrients, calcium phosphate, out of our bones. So that was really interesting, and I'm glad you elaborated on that. So I have no further questions. I know you have a client coming in. So I would just say thank you very much. That was a really nice, succinct session. And um, uh, everyone, uh, we will see John back again tomorrow. Let me check my schedule. This might be a good segue. Tomorrow, John's going to be talking to us about um, hormones and how we can balance hormones. So that's a good one for the ladies out there. So Dad, thank you again for your time. Have a lovely afternoon and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.